Hi, I'm going to talk to you about students' T distribution, which is a fairly recent uh, thing. Back in 1908, William Gossett published this in Biometrica, um, and he was a chemist working for Guinness Brewery. He found a way of um, checking or testing for the quality of stout by only using small sample sizes because it's an expensive process. Uh, he did go to Oxford University. He worked with Carl Pearson of Correlation and Chi Squared fame for a while, but uh, this is one of the things that he did and he's very well known for it. And um, because the brewery didn't want their secrets um, well known to everybody, Gossett um, published this under the pen name of Student and that's why it's called Student's T Distribution. Let's have a look at how it works and what we do with it. So one of the biggest assumptions is that you have to assume the population is approximately normally distributed or maybe it's exactly normally distributed. So that's our main assumption if you're asked about assumptions. Uh, it's used for when we don't know the population's standard deviation. That's the main trigger. So if you can assume or you know that the population is dis normally distributed but you don't know the population's uh, standard deviation, then we go down the T distribution route. And in particular, it's very handy when we've got small sample sizes, and you'll see that in the examples. You can actually use it for big samples too, but uh, if it's a very large sample, then you may as well just use the normal distribution and Z tables anyway. So we're going to have to make assumptions or estimates of the parameters. So we're going to use S, our sample. Uh, standard deviation and you should get be able to find this directly from your calculator if you're given a list of things then make sure that you're using the sample one and not the population one um, and we're going to use just the mean x bar mean of the sample as the best estimate we've got of the mean of the population so one thing that we do have um, there are different t distributions there's a, there's a family of them and so you've got to use the right one but it's fairly easy to do degrees of freedom, uh, you just do the number in your sample minus 1. And if you think about it, if I picked a sample of 10 and I knew what the mean was supposed to be, then I know that the total should be 10 times whatever the mean is. Uh, so if I know 9 of the things, then the 10th one is fixed. It's got to be whatever it is to make it the mean. And that's a brief explanation for why this, the degrees of freedom is 1 less than the sample size. Uh, you don't really need to know that to be honest, I'm sure most of you will just remember it's being n minus 1. Interesting thing, you also don't need to know this but it's quite cool, is that the variance of a t distribution is given by degrees of freedom over degrees of freedom minus 2, as long as your degrees of freedom is greater than 2. Uh, yeah, like I said, you don't need this part, but I thought that's cool. Uh, there's a whole host of tables. By the time you're doing students T, you'll probably be familiar with normal distribution tables, maybe uh, binomial distribution tables, Poisson perhaps, um, and you know just another set to get used to. You have your degrees of freedom down the side, and the percentage that you're trying to cut off uh, across the top. We'll just have a little more look at that in a second as well. So um, here's an example then. Uh, this isn't entirely true, but we'll pretend it is. So. Family's health, I measure how much sugar we consume each week. Uh, in, for all of us, there's four of us. Um, if I randomly pick five of those weeks, and I get this results in kilograms of sugar. I've tried to include both added and uh, sugar that's sort of inherent in fruit and other things. So those are my five samples there. Uh, and I want a 95% confidence interval for the true mean of how much sugar we're consuming per week. Uh, like I said before then, we have to assume normal distribution it seems reasonable that it would be. It's uh, continuous and it's going to vary a little bit over time, but it seems like it should be normal. Those are my samples. Again, so a curve something like this. Uh, one of the things that the student's T does is, it because we don't know the population's standard deviation, we, we have to be less confident about our interval, or in other words, our interval needs to be wider to produce the same level of confidence. And you'll see that in the tables. The um, the T tables give you a larger multiplier than they would do from the Z tables. However, process is similar. If I want the central 95%, then I'm cutting off two tails. There's going to be 2.5% in each end because it's symmetrical. So this cutoff point here is the 97.5% cutoff point, or 0 0.975. 
degrees of freedom, that easy, it's four. So I use this table, this is a zoomed in bit, um, degrees of freedom four, 0.975, that's the, the tail that I'm cutting off to the left hand side. So where I've put my line, I cut off 0.975 of the area to, on the left of that. And reading it off here, these two red lines, when you're doing a stats exam and you've got these things, take two rulers in you, put one across and one down. It's unbelievable how many people misread these things. So just take two rulers in. Nobody's going to laugh at you. Okay, more calculations. Mean of the sample, well, fairly straightforward. That's my X bar. Standard deviation of the sample, so S, making sure I use the right buttons on my calculator. I've used my stats mode to get this. Um, again, check that you can do that. And then we're pretty much just in the case of substituting everything in. So I want a 95% confidence interval for mu, and it's given by this formula. Very similar to the normal distribution ones, but instead of T, uh, sorry, I've got T instead of Z. So the mean, plus or minus. The t-score from the table multiplied by my sample standard deviation over the square root of the sample size. And you may recall that um, this uh, standard deviation over the square root of the sample size, uh, sometimes called the standard error, just to sort of show that it's a little bit different from the standard deviation. But again, not a major thing to worry about, but that is called the standard error, that part there. Just plugging in the numbers. If you've got this far and you're doing A-level stats, then, to be honest, this should be a breeze. Uh, your calculator will do it for you. Putting the numbers in gives me this. Useful to show the steps, though. It's always worth showing the steps of what you've done, method marks. So finally, my confidence interval is 1.638 to 2.552.